Welcome to Training in Instructional Design. This will be a lecture on building an effective PowerPoint presentation. This is Lecture B. The learning objectives for the Building an Effective PowerPoint Presentation Unit are number one, embedding graphics and video in a presentation, number two, demonstrating the appropriate use of builds and actions, number three, using the PowerPoint graph and chart functions for designing instructional materials, and four, demonstrating how to deliver an effective PowerPoint presentation. Note that screenshots of the following slides may be from an earlier version of PowerPoint. PowerPoint includes many different types of data charts and graphs, including column charts, line graphs, pie charts, bar graphs, area graphs, scatter graphs, stock charts, surface charts, donut charts, bubble graphs, and radar graphs. We will discuss a few of these in this unit. In your presentation, select a blank slide. To add a chart or graph, click on the icon in the slide placeholder. If you don't see this image in your PowerPoint slide, you may need to change the slide layout. After clicking on the icon, a window will open for you to select a chart type to insert into your slide. Microsoft provides an online tutorial on working with graphs and charts. office.microsoft.com slash en dash us slash powerpoint dash help slash use dash charts dash and dash graphs dash in dash your dash presentation dash ha 0101-08502.aspx. If Microsoft Office Excel 2007 isn't installed on your computer, you will not be able to take advantage of the advanced data charting capabilities in the 2007 Microsoft Office system. If Office Excel 2007 is not installed, when you create a new data chart in Microsoft Office PowerPoint 2007, Microsoft Graph opens. A chart then appears with its associated data in a table called a data sheet. You can enter your own data in the data sheet import data from a text file to the data sheet, or paste data from another program to the data sheet. This document from Microsoft will give you step-by-step -step instructions for creating and modifying basic charts. SmartArt graphics are a new way to add visual interest to your text by converting your bulleted list to a graphic. To convert a block of text in your slide to SmartArt, First select the Insert tab, then select the text, and then select the appropriate design to enhance the meaning of your text. This slide illustrates two ways to represent, make a bulleted list of steps or concepts more meaningful to your learners. The graphic on the left is a SmartArt basic cycle, which can be used to represent a sequence of steps that loops back to the first step, just like our ADDI model. The second graphic on the right is a simple pyramid smart art design and can be used to show how concepts build upon another, for example, the food pyramid. Now we will learn how to insert images, graphics, and videos into a PowerPoint presentation. In this unit, we will use the term images to represent photograph, screen captures, or highly detailed visual representations of an object. The term graphics is used to refer to line drawings and simple graphic drawings such as logos and cartoons. These graphics have a limited number of colors and are simple or abstract representations of objects or concepts. Photos and illustrations are a great way to convey your message and enhance your presentation. You can take your own screen captures or photographs and insert it into PowerPoint or get an image from a commercial photo service. This way, you ensure that your image is free of copyright restrictions. CorbisImages.com is one example, and GettyImages.com is another stock photo agency. Often, your image files from a digital camera are much larger than needed for a PowerPoint presentation. You should always compress or reduce the images you embed into a PowerPoint presentation to optimize the file size. This is a very easy step using PowerPoint's built-in image compression, and you don't need to compress each image separately using photo editing software. To compress an image, or even to all the images in a presentation, 
double-click on an image and choose Compress Pictures in the Image Edit menu bar on the top left. This feature is only available in PC or non-Macintosh versions of PowerPoint. The Compress Picture dialog pop-up window appears and you now click the Options button. Choose Screen Resolution for on-screen presentations. Another option is to compress all images in a single file. To compress the entire PowerPoint file, you should 1. Open your PowerPoint file 2. Click the Save floppy icon in the upper left-hand corner 3. Click the Tools drop-down menu besides the Save button 4. Select Compress Pictures 5. Click Options 6. Check Automatically Perform Basic Compression on Save 7. Check Delete Cropped Areas of Pictures 8. Check the appropriate target output, print, screen, or email 9. Click OK 10. Click OK to the Apply Compression Settings Now dialog To crop an image, choose the Cropping tool on the Image Editing menu bar and use the Guides, Black Lines and Angles in the corner of the image to crop the image and see only a portion of the original image. This cropped image shows one penguin instead of the original image of three penguins. To add a movie to your PowerPoint presentation, click on the Movie icon in the slide placeholder. The Insert Movie window will appear, and you can insert a movie on your computer if it is one of the file types that PowerPoint can embed. QuickTime, WMV, MP4, and AVI are some of the movie file types that you can play in PowerPoint. You cannot embed a flash video in a 2007 PowerPoint file. When you click on the movie in your slide, you can change the move options and set the movie to play automatically when the slide is opened or play when the mouse is clicked and other options such as play the movie in full screen. When you add a movie to a presentation, it is added to the slide as a link and not embedded as photos and other objects. It is usually a good idea to copy your movies to the presentation folder before you insert the link into the slide and make sure that you copy the entire folder, including the presentation and movies, when transferring the presentation to another computer so that the presentation finds the movie when it is called to play it. Animation effects are used to control when the text and objects appear on the screen. When used effectively, they can help the learners understand how steps or concepts are built or related to one another. If animations are improperly used, they are distracting and impair the learner's ability to concentrate on the important concepts in the slide. Click on the Animation tab on the menu bar to select the effect. You must click on the slide placeholder object to begin. One commonly used effect is introducing a list line by line, so you can lead the learner. By introducing each point one at a time, the learner is not reading ahead of you. You can also have arrows and other objects appear to highlight aspects of your slides if it is important to show the entire list and then speak about each step. Use hyperlinks to access additional information that cannot be embedded directly into your PowerPoint file. You can link to an existing file, such as a PDF or even another PowerPoint file. You can also link to sites on documents and website on the Internet. Let's say that you wanted to create a link to a tutorial on Microsoft's website. Simply highlight the text, Create a Basic Presentation dash Tutorial, and in the Insert tab, choose Insert Hyperlink. Your link will appear in blue and underlined. You must be in the slideshow mode to click on the link and go to the website. When you click on the link, PowerPoint will open Internet Explorer and go directly to the URL you inserted in the address bar. Once you have completed your presentation, 
Remember, you have various print options for audience handouts, speaker notes, and slides. The appropriate use of these print materials were discussed in Unit 4. Be sure to proofread your presentation. Check for spelling errors even after using PowerPoint's spell check feature. In addition, do a quick run through the presentation in the slideshow view to ensure that all the animations, builds, and movies work correctly. Of course, you will want to rehearse your presentation before giving it live, and always make sure you check your presentation on the computer and projector you will be using for training. Always respect the intellectual property of others. If you use material created by someone else, give him or her credit and ask for permission if the copyright requires you to get permission before using. Check with your EHR vendor to make sure you can use screen captures. And finally, make sure you have not included any protected health information in your presentations. This concludes the lecture on building an effective PowerPoint presentation. The summary of this lecture is that you should be able to use the principles of effective PowerPoint design, given a particular training program and learner population, through the following objectives. Number one, constructing a script or storyboard for a presentation. Number two, designing a custom slide background for a training program. Number three, appropriately using color and text in a presentation. Number four, embedding graphics and video in a presentation. Number five, making appropriate use of the builds and actions in PowerPoint. Number six, using the PowerPoint graph and chart functions in your instructional materials. And seven, delivering an effective PowerPoint presentation.